And we are back. Case three, murder, Roman baths, no weapon. Uh, so this is where I, uh, I'm completely blind. I no longer uh, know anything about anything. So expect some grand stupidity. We can take the letters. Do I want to take the letters? The power of the empire is growing stronger day by day. As of yesterday, the Mexican consortium Caracal began serving the cause of the British Empire. This arrangement is undeniably profitable for London and England overall, and is a great achievement for our exceptional diplomatic and political community. In other news, a train has mysteriously disappeared en route to Evesham railway station. Right, so they buried that, but they got a Mexican, I guess, well, some sort of gang business to uh, join them. So, I don't know. Is it a good thing? On the sofa for the third time today. Well, don't be surprised if Watson sits on you again. I'm going to see if my gorgeous beauty is still there. Yes, she is. Where else would she be? You're going to the bath. The book is glitched out. Oh, there we go. Sir Rodney Bentcliffe is still in the steam room. It has not been touched, per your usual instructions, Mr. Holmes. I shall be waiting for you here, but please hurry. You found no murder weapon? No, and that's why I called you. All three witnesses and the victim were locked in when the murder occurred, and they remained so until we got here. We even had to pick the lock to enter. I see. Right, so three witnesses and a locked door, one dead, a uh, sir. Are you able to identify the men who were with the victim in the steam room? Yes, the manager of the bath, Sir Gregory Pitkin. A lad from the city council, Garrow, and an archaeologist by the name of Blinkhorn. I think the plump one, Garrow, did it. He doesn't seem right in the end. Well, we shall see. Another sir. Garrow seems sus. And an R. Yologist. So I'm sort of missing how or what happened, but we're going to figure that out in a second because the witnesses, like, was it was it dark in there or something? Or am I completely missing the point? And I'm also, I have uh, some kind of a flu, so I'll be doing even worse. <laughs> All the, uh, Chances are, uh, the odds are stacked against me. Was there anyone else here, apart from those gentlemen in the steam room? Yes, a uh, Mr. Phillips. He was the one who called the police. He'll be able to give you more details. All right. So four people around uh, that we know of. Well, five. Um at least because the dead guy also counts so 
five people around at least so if we figure out that there's you know someone else moving around here then we know exit this the changing room the steam room yeah <laughs> you won't tell me what that says Frigidarium. I was like frigidarium. I don't know what we all know what frigid means, but um, I was thinking like it's like a massage room or something like that. <laughs> but I'm not sure if it has anything to do with it. Um, I think we should probably talk to Mr. Phillips first. Let me just think about it for a couple of seconds. So. We get we get what he says because he he wasn't really there. He called the cops, so he wasn't you know um, involved in that sense. So he can tell us what he thinks happened, and probably pretty neutrally, and then we'll see if uh, everyone corroborates the story. Good day to you, Mister Phillips. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my colleague, Doctor Watson. Would you be so kind as to answer our questions? Certainly, sir. Okay, let's have a look at him first. He looks like he might be drunk. Light wrinkles. He has those reddish eyes. Um... Syriat Labor, a piece from, no, I guess like piece of work, Manchester City, I don't know what that means, October 9th, 98, telegram sent today, so it is actually 98 and not 95, as I previously thought. Just looking at what it says this morning. Um, I'll just call him Bellboy. I know he's not, but I don't know what he is exactly. And uh, Telegram today doesn't really give us anything. Are we already going back? Alright, I guess I'll, I'll press the wrong button, maybe. I'm trying to look for things about him that... Like he's got sort of grayish hair, but I'm not sure that has anything to do with anything. Grooms himself, lives alone. Oh, shit. Okay, I gotta pay more... Scissor cut lives alone. Okay. So that keeps sort of spinning it. The tie is red, like everything looks like a basic uniform. I think I'll, I'll select that um, last, but he has a basic uniform, looks tidy enough. Is there something in his arms, hands? No. All right. Shiny buttons. Okay, so he's a fairly basic person, I guess, although he lives alone. Please tell us the chain of events from the start of your day. Everything that you can remember. The slightest detail may be of importance. Very well, sir. I came in at 6.30 this morning, and I opened the baths. I made sure that the room was clean, and I prepared the towels. The brazier was still burning. There was a fire burning all night. 
Yes, Sir Gregory ordered me to light the brazier yesterday. It takes some time until the room is fully heated. The gentleman had a meeting at nine o'clock this morning. I wanted everything to be perfect. They'd been in the steam room for 20 minutes when I suddenly heard shouting. I ran to the door, but it was closed. I couldn't open it. So I ran out to the street to call for the police. One constable came up, and then there were others, and they picked the lock. Then Inspector Lestrade came along, and he told us that nothing should be touched. Right, so we know that he left um, at around... Because he sent the telegram, the telegraph, at 7.30, I think. So that means that he came in at... Uh, came in at around... What did he say? 6.30. The fire was already lit. And then at around maybe 7.15 or something, he leaves. He leaves and then... Let's say, this is just guessing, guesswork, but then let's say that he came back at around 7.45 or something. So during that time, uh, someone could have got in. And probably did, or something. So, they must have been hiding. If, if, uh, if this is the case, then they were hiding somewhere here in the... Uh, in the baths, and then um, they had to be there for a few hours because then I think, uh, thank God the dialogue is there because I'm sort of thinking about a lot of things, but then they had the meeting and then 20 minutes in uh, is shouting He goes out, which means that and whoever was in there could have, if there was someone there, they uh, they could probably exit, and then um, then once they're out, they're out, and they took the weapon with them. That would make sense. So, again, I can think of like ways that maybe if the weapon is, um, if there's a weapon hidden in the baths, then that would mean that the, the, um, the killer could have just hidden it to frame one of them. Or he could have just taken it with him. So if there's no weapon, then I would, I would assume because the other three witnesses are all keeping tabs on each other. I think. Um, then if the weapon is hidden somewhere, it means nothing really. If the weapon is nowhere to be found, then, uh, then it means that the killer took it with him, probably, uh, depending on the cause of death, of course. So if nowhere to be found, that would mean that um, killer left with it. And I mean, and anything I say is not for certain. It is uh, just uh, creating a sort of realistic timeline of seeing what is possible and what is not. Hmm. Did you receive any other visitors this morning? No one. Until these gentlemen arrived. Sir Gregory was the first. And then, while we were discussing work details, Sir Rodney and Mr. Blinkhorn arrived, and Mr. Garrow followed. And what happened after that? I waited until they'd all entered the steam room, then I returned to the hall. The changing room door was open, so I should hear if they needed anything. 
you would have heard if someone had entered or left the steam room. Certainly, sir. These doors make a lot of noise. Okay, so I was I was uh, writing something down and I, I broke the cardinal rule of listen to when they're talking. So I'll, I'll just quickly have a look at the last sentence because I was thinking about something. So, uh, where do we start? Right here. And then while we were discussing work details, Sir Rodney and Mr. Blinkhorn arrived and Mr. Garrow followed. All right, so Sir Gregory is probably the uh, the uh, owner, because I, I don't remember names. And Rodney and Blink arrived, and then Garrow next. Um, so they all went into the, uh, they all went into the steam room and let me just check when the meeting was because yeah, the meeting was at nine o'clock. So he was already here. So not 10, it was nine. So he was already back, uh, of course, from, from his, uh, telegram mission, um, and the doors make a lot of noise. Uh, so let's assume that the bellboy is uh, telling the truth about everything. Um, it's possible that he isn't, but that's something to go on and then we'll see if it works. Uh, so they take them there and then return to hall and that's about that and then 20 minutes later some commotion happens all right so i think first we should actually Old room. The steam rooms on the other side. I know, I know. I was thinking just go everywhere else except for the steam room because that's where everything happens. So we can sort of place things outside of the events first. I don't know why. It just feels like it's uh, easier. So this is the dressing room. Very nice. These clothes belong to one of the suspects from the steam room. Clothes belonging to one of the suspects. <clears throat> I would imagine it's Garrow's clothes there. Or maybe Garrow's was back here alone. No, these look fancy too. Expensive so Expensive clothes yeah. belonging to one of the men from the steam room. Okay, so champagne has been opened. An ice bucket to keep the champagne chilled. Champagne for a special occasion. Unopened. Oh. It was intended to be enjoyed after the steam session. I thought it had been opened, but then the cork was put back. So I guess they were talking business in the meeting and then uh, there is a possible motive of um, to stop a merger or something like that business deal is better and um, I already forgot who Garrow's was. So,
the manager of the bath, a lad from city council, and an archaeologist. City council and archaeologist, so something to do with a museum. Maybe, perhaps. And... So... I want to figure out who Garros is, but I, I can ask him, of course. And, like in the first one, where I missed the frame, I think, we're going to focus on that as well. Um, who, why was, why was this guy here? Uh, who, who, uh, why was the, the plump one, whatever? Because this doesn't look like a place for, you know, ordinary citizens, maybe. Good Lord, Holmes. Ah, death with a peculiarly Roman piquancy. Like the one you almost had an hour ago. Let us forget about that. Blood looks like a dragon. So I see the key there in the blood. His eye has been gouged out. There's no external light source, but the fire is, um, fire is a light source. It's not peculiarly dark in here, peculiarly, it's not very dark in here. Uh, so I'm just going to have a little look around. Steam switch. So I guess, because <clears throat> I'm, I'm not familiar with a steam room like this, so maybe there's a lot of steam so nobody can really see much once the steam is fully engaged. G. Newell and Sons, steam specialists, Seattle, WA. Seattle, Washington, American made. America. Uh, let's see what happens. He's probably not going to pull. Oh, he is going to pull it. Right. With the steam on, I'm unable to see even a few feet away. <coughs> well, why did I turn it on now? And so I can't talk to them now when the steam is on. <laughs> But, uh, so they were all maybe, I would imagine the two, um, the two men were, the two businessmen were sitting together because, uh, Because they had a deal. <clears throat> and let me just have a look because I what is he? oh right, because they walked in and said things. So I was looking for, because uh, the, the names are still sort of, I need to learn them. Sir Rodney Bentcliffe was here as well. So he could have been one of the people who was having the meeting, of course. <coughs> so I was thinking maybe it was those two guys or something, but... Uh, 
Let's see what this stands for. Concentrate your attention on finding details. So can I... Yeah, I can remove that, so I just want to look at it. Uh, I don't see much. I mean, there's some you know, marking-looking things or scratches and stuff, but so that, that one has it as well. Right, so that's just for using it, I guess. Not sure why it did why they did it that way, but maybe it will figure it out later. One lens is cracked, probably due to the temperature of the brazier. These lenses are for myopia. The wearer is short sighted. Myopia. And there's a crack on them. And I, I trust Sherlock, so probably from this. The brazier is still burning. The heat here is extreme. So, um, if it was a uh, <coughs> tin knife, they could have thrown it in there and then. See it melt. It is too hot. I cannot reach into it. I will need something to pick up this melted metal. All right. I was thinking, like, there, there really is no place to hide here. Absolutely no place to hide or... or to come in unnoticed or... Mr. Holmes? The grid cannot be removed. Because, uh, if the witnesses say that, that, uh, no one else was here, which is, you know, probable, or, well, you can say that no one was here, but the steam was f on, but, uh, I would imagine somebody turned the steam down. So let me let me just uh, uh, when was steam turned off? Because like if there's commotion and things are happening, it's dark. It's, it's steamy. People, the door is locked. And the officers pick the lock, so it's it's probable that nobody um, we need to figure out when uh, when the uh, how did they uh, figure out that he was dead because I, I would imagine that because it's an eyeball that you know the noise happened, <clears throat> but then again, you know he could be stabbed in the eye and just dropped fell down to the ground. Um, so we'll see, but I, I, I would imagine they're going to make this thing a lot more confusing for me. <laughs> um, I was trying to uh, keep a keep a logical head and also sort of remember what I've learned from the past two cases. But I think um, I think. I think it is time to examine the body and then talk to them so we can maybe pinpoint some inaccuracies there. And also, um, I was thinking because these grids can be examined that it's possible that uh, the weapon was sort of hidden in there because they're the only place really that you can, you know, unless you throw it up there, which is relatively impossible. Um, It looks like a key. I should check this blood sample at Baker Street. Right. Maybe it's... I want to look at the key, but I guess it's at the body. Or then... Yeah, there we go. This key was covered in blood. I should ask Phillips about it.
So I'll just put that up key behind dead so that in case it matters. Um, Some dirt or earth. I'll take a sample. Dirt finger. <clears throat> Death is very recent, between thirty minutes to one hour ago. All right, it's thirty one hour ago, sort of. Approximately. So there's nothing really that doesn't make sense right now. Hmm. The wound should not have bled so profusely. This pool is rather large. <coughs> so if that blood isn't his, then. Or then if it isn't even blood, red paint or something. Because it does look a little strange, but um, compared to the blood there. There was only one hit from the weapon. It pierced the right eye straight through to the brain. Right. So death was probably instant, which would make it sort of Romanesque assassin kind of thin thing. Uh, right eye. Can I do an upskirt? No. Shame. Alright, so Mr. Garrow, he seems like a maybe a plant in a way, where somebody just put him here to take the blame or something. Um, but I feel like they're gonna turn it around or something. Well I'll I'll talk to him. Uh the obvious thing is is the blood bloody uh, handprint on the towel. Actually, I'll, I'll talk to these guys first and see what's up. I'll have a look if there's anything else because uh, the handprint um, looks like it might be his, and he kneeled down and put his hand on his knee or something um, after. So he might have gone to the body first or something like that. So I'll, I'll talk to them in order. It's horrible. I can't hmm. talk at the moment. Okay. I'm in shock. I don't want to talk. It's horrible. So Rodney is dead. Can't we speak about it somewhere else? We can. So I'll go and ask about the key then. So there's no, uh, you know, locker rooms or anything like that, or lockers. Or anything. Until I've oh. seen the body. I saw the body. What did I miss? Uh, maybe there's something else on the face. So I was thinking, you know, back of the head is is hurt, and that's where all the blood came from. But then I can't uh, can't look at it. The blood is dripping down. Oh, I missed something on the right hand. Is it the other dirt? No. Oh, Look, ring finger. He was wearing a ring. He very likely removed it before the steam session. I think we have found all that we can here, taking into consideration the abysmal lighting. Constable, we have finished with the body. We don't have many leads here. What concerns me is that we still have to find the murder weapon. Mr. Holmes? Please have the body removed without disturbing anything else in the room. All right, Mr. Holmes. I was wondering, Holmes, it's fairly reckless to carry out a murder inside a closed chamber. 
Why do you suppose they did it? There are a great many possibilities. The murderer was in a hurry. Or he is an artist. Or a ghost. Or he wanted to ensure that I'd be brought in on the case. Probably the latter. You are ridiculous. Do you know that? The weapon is nowhere to be found. Right. So I guess... I can't understand what happened. Am I allowed to leave? If you have to interrogate me... I found him. I touched his shoulder, thinking that he was just asleep. His shoulder on the left side, I hope. But uh, we'll see. So let us go and ask about the key then. And the champagne and whatnot. See what what else is uh, gonna come up. There is a bottle of champagne on ice in the changing room. Do you have any idea who left it there? There is? Are you quite certain? I didn't pay any attention. Do you believe that it's important? <sighs> There's also ice in it, so... For that amount of ice, I, I don't think it takes a long time for it to warm up, especially next to a steam room. That's been on all night. So... So not from the butler boy. How many people have keys to the steam room? We have just the one key for now, which Sir Gregory gave to me. So, this morning you opened the steam room, and then? I put the key inside my desk. But when they called, I couldn't find it. It had disappeared. I, I, I don't know where it is. Did you leave the baths at any time or receive any visitors? No, sir. I did not. You are not telling the truth, Mr. Phillips. You left your work this morning and you went to the post office where you dispatched a telegram at around 7.30. But how could you... No, I... The telegram was for someone in Manchester. Mr. Holmes, it's imp... I'll tell you everything. I left the baths at 7.20. My sister wrote to me yesterday, and she needed a reply, for our mother is unwell. I was away for 20 minutes, and I closed the baths on my way out. Did you receive a reply from your sister? No, she wasn't meant to. I just told her to pawn my old school uniform so that she could pay for the medication. Did you check to see if the key was still in your desk when you returned? No, I didn't. Please, Mr. Holmes, don't tell the police about this. Sir Gregory would give me the sack. I need this job. I see. So it sort of it still makes sense. So it took him 10 minutes to get there, 10 minutes back. And he was probably uh, hurrying to... So there is a 20 minute window that someone could have gotten in. Uh, taken the key. I'm a little bit confused now <clears throat> uh, about the key being behind the corpse. So it's one of those things like how many murderers drop something like that there and stuff but uh, and I also I missed whether he uh, I missed whether he f uh, found the key later because uh, it was gone right yeah right it was gone so that's the key that was in there so we know that um, we know that uh, if Mr. Phillips isn't the killer, 
which I'm 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 like relatively sure he's he's not the one who did the stabbing but uh, someone came in uh, grabbed the key went in there into the steam rooms full of steam but there's there's a problem with um, with locking the door and the key being inside so can we just assume directly at least for now because there's no implication of a second key right now um, that that the murderer has to be sort of inside uh, with the knowledge that we have right now so that uh, he, he couldn't have just uh, lock the door and then you know slid the key behind the corpse on uh, I think like an elevated little surface so that's not going to really work um, so probably uh, murderer is in there now because it was locked when they were trying to get out <coughs> um, we're going to figure out if we if we get some adi uh, some additional information then These paths are becoming sinister. if we get some more information we're going to change our change our hypotheses so i would imagine they want to get dressed still so we're going to need to I feel ill. I want to go. Or do we have to stay here? I don't want to stay here. And I'll just uh my assumption about who found the body was was correct because if it if he didn't find the body then it would have been strange. So what's his goddamn face? Garo, I wrote it down. I can't make up my own <laughs> handwriting. And uh, well, wait a minute. No one said who turned the the steam is probably not going to be on all night. Like it's going to be turned off, and then you let the steam in in the morning but I'm not sure anybody mentioned that let me just see because he said that the fire was on from last night but um, so let me just have a look um, uh, the gentleman had a meeting at nine o'clock like the brazier yesterday, it takes some time until the room is fully heated. So, it's possible that the steam was on, like the room was already steamy before. So the body could have been here before anything really happened. <clears throat> but, uh, it, the death was recent, so it, it's not, I don't, I don't think it makes much sense, but, um, Something to keep in mind, though, just to have all the possible sort of main. Can't always think of all the possible ones, but all the all the things that make sense at least. Let's see if we can get over there now. So we need something long. This area serves as Sir Rodney Bentcliffe's workshop. Right. Right. So <coughs> this already uh, is not a secure site by any means. Um, so things just got a lot more complicated, I think. Though the area of the baths is sort of still remains, but um, the site is not secure. And 
<clears throat> I think I'll go through this room first if we can get in there. And then we're going to find some sort of evidence of possible trespassing. It's messy. I will need these tongs. Tools used by archaeologists in their research. So those numbers are probably... You know, I was just about to say that there needs to be uh, some sort of category system. Archaeological findings. Old clay pots with numbers inscribed upon them. This metal plate, besides its archaeological interest, appears to be a part of something larger. At the present moment, I am unable to determine exactly what that might be. Right. It looks like a wall. And I forgot the obvious. A shape has been cut in the plate. What should be done with it? Oh, we're just going to take the whole thing? Fine. Probably a puzzle awaiting to be solved later on. There are few among us who could claim any degree of unfamiliarity with the name of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. He is a gentleman who po possesses the wealth, the notoriety, and vigor to well match the finest of his ilk around, uh, abound in England. His intellect is equal to his charms, uh, as has oft been declared by the young ladies of the European aristocracy. He holds powerful connections within the Lord's chamber and carries an influence inside the political world. There are those who would call him unforgiving authoritarian. We should rather say that Sir Rodney is determined and ambitious. His presence at any archaeological site can only mean success for all concerned. So, uh, Notorious means enemies. Um, success means suspicious. And power equals more enemies. <clears throat> Miraculous reopening uh, for the Strand Lane Roman Baths excavation, re excavation research. The research efforts were about to be halted when a savior arrived in the form of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Sir Rodney has taken over immediate control of the excavation, claiming that the site holds the key to a great mystery. We pledge to update our readers with all the exciting news as it develops. So, um, uh, yeah, so something around here that I can't think of any reason why someone would want to stop an archaeological site being sort of excavated unless they're sort of loopy glasses dear friend i wish to organize a press conference at the strand lane baths next month 1893 uh, 1893 was a remarkable year for my work in egypt but now it is time to set my focus upon english archaeology 
to shine the light on our national treasures and reveal them to the public. I would like to see as many journalists as possible in attendance to record this event and record it favorably if we treat them well enough. Did I just read that right? Yeah. I should like to recall my old friendship with Lord Blackmore and use the special funds of the Royal Archaeological Institute for this event. Right. So, the meeting was probably about that. So, ceiling site deal. And the glasses probably belong to him. So let me just, uh, since I'm bad with names, I'm just gonna, so this is Bentcliffe. Bencliffe's office, so it's sort of safe to assume that there has glasses, although I am, like always, uh, willing and able to change my mind. And I guess these letters and all the papers are just... Because it looks a little bit like someone's been sort of looking around here or something, but... So one what glass plate negatives a remarkable method for recording ancient civilizations a glass plate negative is missing it is a glass plate negative of an Egyptian statue no dates on them Is that it? Did I just accidentally pick the right one or something? <laughs> um, so, missing negative. I can't really see a reason for a missing negative, like what is so important. This isn't Indiana Jones, so there's not going to be any real reason to hide some sort of cursed chamber. Archaeological findings. Old clay pots with numbers inscribed upon them. All right. So there's nothing really interesting here. Um, we did to get the tongs so that we can go and pick the uh, assumed weapon from from the uh, fire and also this is premeditated and not some sort of uh, rushed. rushed plan in, in at least in in the sense of uh, it being in the heat of the moment because things are things are clearly a little bit out of place It is somewhat treacherous. <clears throat> Fortunately, I am unscathed. To where does this corridor lead? To the Frigidarium, the coal room. Barely unscathed and by a very small margin. And treacherous is an understatement. Right. So... Oh, 
hold room is blocked and hidden and that would mean that someone is still here the person who did this is still here in some way and of course it could be it could be more than one person but uh the only one who could really plant the key well no We'll see. Those stones weigh tons. We won't move them. It does not matter. If our investigation requires it, we shall ask for them to be removed. Because that would have... Uh, that could have been done through all kinds of means. Um, but I would imagine that if someone's going to do it... It might be best to do it because it, it made a lot of noise so it might be best to do it in a timed way in a sense where you sort of uh, sabotage it and then wait for it to collapse later in the day or something um, uh, that would I guess would sort of mean that they were knew what they were doing possibly which would uh, mean that they are also some type of maybe an archaeologist because they know how if they know how to break something in, in a certain way they'll know how to build them I guess as well so now I would imagine uh, one of the motives would be a competing sort of archaeologist who has maybe had things stolen from them. Mm. Because uh, if people are sort of treat this person this this archaeologist who's around here like a notorious sort of person they, they're probably a successful notorious person is usually is usually probably um, not doing things the right way or the honorable way so let's go figure out the uh, Go figure out what's in here, and I'll actually uh, stop the episode here before, so it doesn't get too bloated. Um, but I think uh, we're sort of getting onto something. But then again, we're we're not even we don't really have anything concrete right now. But we'll uh, figure it out in the next one. I'll see you there.